quickly, but we're going to do the circle type of thing we did at the beginning. <laughs> I'm going to go, I thought I had uh -huh. copies of these, but I don't. So I'm going to run into oh, the okay. office and make copies of it. So okay, perfect. Have that just so, I mean, they were emailed it if they were here, but they weren't. If they weren't, yes. Yeah. I agree. And then, so that'll take me a few minutes. But I'll be right back. So welcome, and I see some faces that weren't here last time, so thank you for coming this time. The School Start Committee members that are here so far are Allison Cornwall, Reuben Bennett, myself, and then, of course, Bill Kimball, our superintendent, is he's making some copies right now that are, some, that are the questions that we generated from the last forum. Anyone who was here last time got those by email, but we did bring print, print copies. If you weren't here last time, please fill out the index card so that we can get you in the group of follow-up. And the questions are on the sign over here where we'd like to know your name, your child's name, and grade school, and uh, your email as well. So, yeah, look on that poster right there. He has it. We, I will turn it over to Bill for uh, <laughs> the, Great, Karen, you don't need me. Um, the structure. But with the, if we stay this small a group, I'm thinking that because three, you have three board members here, that we probably just like two tables. I think so. Yeah. yeah. So with the number of people here tonight, that'd be great to do it the best. So what we wanted to do is uh, like we did last time. We started with a circle, uh, just to do introductions and say if you're new to the group, what question do you have or comment do you have, and. If you were here last time, we're going to add a little bit to that, which is what, um, what have you thought about? Did a new question come or did you say, hey, a light bulb went on? And, and try to keep it to a sentence. We're not trying to have a page essay here, but just to, a way of in So introduce yourself to the group. Um, we, I think linking about connections you have to the school, kids, your kids might be in the school here in the system. And uh, either of those two prompts as I put up there on the poster board. And, I'll give you all a minute to think about that, and then I'll ask for someone to volunteer to go first. And you have to be within the circle. I'm fine here. <laughs> My name is David Lawrence. My uh, twin five-year-olds are currently at Rumney in the pre-K program and will be starting kindergarten in September. And uh, what was the other thing you want? What have you thought, of, Dave, you heard last time. So what, uh, yeah, what, actually, what, you, what, like, what one question or what thought have you had? Well, my key thought awesome. that I still have, even after posting on a front board forum, is where is everybody? Like, this is a really important thing that we're talking about for the community, and we only get two dozen people to show up, but something else has to be done. I actually had two people reach out to me on, on Messenger um, who are not here, and I can share their questions later, but they're like, are you getting enough input for the process? And I'm like, no, since you seem to have an opinion, come on, so we'll, and I'll share it later, yeah. but how do we get more of the community involved? And we're going to talk a little bit more about the different types of involvement. Thanks. I'm Yvonne Quelch. I have a child in freshman year, and I have many questions still, and agree with you that this is such an important topic. I, I really would like to see more people get involved. Hi, I'm Larry Gilbert from East Montpelier. I have no children in the school system anymore, and um, but I'm here because I'm interested, and I actually jotted down a whole bunch of thoughts and ideas, so I don't have just one <laughs> bill. I can't... Uh, do you want to highlight? Um, I, I think uh, um, messaging, I feel like messaging on this is going to be important. How do we, as a group, uh, consistently talk about this in a way that makes sense to people? I'm Adrienne Megida. I live in Middlesex. I have no children in the schools anymore. I'm on the U32 school board. Um, and I'm wondering about holding meetings in each town <coughs> and whether people would feel more comfortable <coughs> coming if it was focused in their local elementary school, just a thought. Um, I also teach in a district where my first graders are in my classroom at 7.30 every morning. So I have some experience with that, and it works. Uh, I'm Wendy Moore. I have a sixth grader at Rummy and a seventh grader at U32. 
And I guess I'm coming to this meeting hoping that whatever obstacles were in place back in 2008 when you went through this, that we can somehow work through those and this just doesn't become a dead end. I'm really concerned yeah. that it's just going to go nowhere again. And I'm hoping, because it's such an important issue that we can move it forward. Well, I'll introduce I think most folks know who I am, but I'm Bill Kimball, I'm the superintendent of schools. Um, and one of the thoughts that really came to me, and I'm going to go off of what you said, Wendy, because I, I don't want to see it become a dead end. Um, I think we can, I'm really optimistic that we can make this go to fruition. And I believe there are ways to do that um, within current constraints. You know, I think we can, we can make that happen. And uh, the science is pretty clear to me. Uh, but maybe I'm biased, but I think, you know, I, I'd say an 8.30 switch for high school, 8 to 8.30 is not that hard. I think there are things we have to figure out. We can do it. I'm Karen Bradley, and I am the chair of the School Start Times Committee, and I'm on the U32 school board. I have a child who is in fourth grade at East Montpelier and a seventh grader here at U32. So I live changes in them daily, which is impressive in their brain and their bodily functions. And uh, yeah, I do mean that. Um, and <laughs> sleep is, is one of our issues already. And they, you know, they roll their eyes because they have the mom who's like quoting studies to them. Like, yeah, there's a study that says, but yeah, I think I'm passionate that, that if we can agree that something is important to do, then we find the way and we find solutions. And that's really coming together to do solutions like this. Even this is a small representation of our community. Uh, our goal then is all of us to go back out and talk to three people. And they talk to three people. And then when, if it does come out to be any kind of decision for change, that is down the road a little bit. And that's where there's also needs to be more engagement. And so the biggest thought I had was uh, once we, from this forum and the next survey and type things like that, come up with solutions, I think that's where you know town meetings of here's some things the forums came up with. What do you think would be a good place? Um, I'm Ruben Bennett, and I'm on the East Montpelier School Board. I have a technical senior, although he's doing early college. I have a sophomore here at U32, uh, and I have a first grader at East Montpelier. So I'm sort of in, uh, in all of those worlds. Um, <coughs> And I, I actually sort of came to this a little bit through the side door because I was on the transportation committee and I just, I grew up in a district where, I actually grew up in, in Northfield and Harwood, where we always just ran one loop of buses and I have never, it's always confounded me why we insist on running the buses half full twice. Um, and so, uh, that was sort of my entry point into reading up on the science and, and some of the really strong data-driven um, evidence for why this really bears uh, investigation at least. And hopefully that you know we can take that sort of science mind um, approach and gather the evidence and really, you know, going back to your concern really anticipate what the concerns and the objections um, that we're going to see are um, so that we have really solid factual answers for what those uh, challenges can be and then we can start to tease apart the logistics of, of what it'll take to affect this change and just um, abusing my position just for a moment um, one of the new sites that i spend much too much time on but um, the number two link today was uh, a link to a sleep study in adolescent kids in Singapore um, showing the positive outcomes um, that they see after they shifted their start times later. I'm Allison. <clears throat> Allison Cornell, I'm on the Rummy board and I have a, girl, a little girl daycare, first grader and second grader at Rummy. Um, I agree with lots of things that people have said. One thing I wanted to add is uh, I'm actually pretty interested in at least considering what would this look like not going to 8.30 but going to 9 um, so that we can really impact a, a difference. I feel like a, you know an hour would be better than a half an hour with respect to the research. I'm Julie Bradshaw. I have a sixth grader at Callis Elementary. and. Um, 
I mean, I guess the only thoughts that I've had is um, that I'm convinced about the data. It's more now I'm interested in talking about problem solving and logistics. I'm Callie Weller. I have a, um, a third grade son and a sixth grade daughter at Callis Elementary School. And I guess I thought a lot about logistics, but I also want to make sure that whatever decisions we make are centered on students and kids. Um, I know that we all have family stuff that makes it tricky, traveling on either end of the day, figuring out um, transportation for kids or daycare for kids on either end of the day can be challenging for all families. Just want to make sure that we're really staying centered um, on what's best for kids. I'm Jane Dudley. I'm a Middlesex resident and a parent of a, a fifth grader and a second grader at Romney. Um, I'm also an employee in a high school. Um, and so this research is long standing. Um, but uh, because of, of my work, I can also see how all too often um, it's too easy to see the barriers or the complications or, oh, that could never, like, yeah, and the conversation doesn't go anywhere. Um, so I'm here because I sense a vitality in this effort, and there, there's real potential here, so I'm optimistic. Um, and also hoping perhaps I can lend some perspective, you know, from with it on the high school level, like about finding solutions and ways to, to make it work. I'm Heather Scandale. I have three kids, three, six, and a 10-year-old at Callis Elementary. And I also work at an elementary school that starts at 7.30 and it works really well. And I'm here for the problem solving about why I didn't know it was a problem. And so now I'm here to kind of like try to make it come to evolution of the late start time. <laughs> so I'm Jennifer Micah. I have a, a sophomore and a senior. And um, so my <coughs> sophomore, if this passes, he'll have a year of it. Um, I, I, I have a couple concerns. One, I hope that we don't uh, flay this to death. Like, I don't think it's that complicated an issue. The science is clear. We need to be careful about letting the details over, overrun the goal. And so while there are always going to be problems, um, there's always going to be details that need to be worked out, if we enact this, you know, two or three years down the line, it's going to work because we all get it to work when we have elementary school students. Everybody, every one of us who's, who's had kids in the five town district has had to deal with the late start time when our kids were, were little. And then it changes when they get older. So I, I just, I'm, I know we all want to worry about the details, but I really, this is not that big a deal. I guess from my perspective, it shouldn't be that big a deal. I'm Scott Thompson. I have a 12th grader and a 9th grader here at U32. I'm um, Callis Rep on the U32 board and also a member of this committee. Uh, I guess my two cents would be uh, I'm very interested in the uh, sleeping <coughs> hours of children. I'm also interested in their waking hours and making the school experience as um, as, as good and as productive as it can be. And um, I'm very open-minded to possibilities of looking at how the, the entire school day might be able to be adapted to, um, you know, to meet the needs of, of the students. Thank you. Oh, surprise, I teach here. <coughs> and I came because I just have an interest, a curiosity about how the community feels about it. So um, while I was out getting copies, um, we can, yeah, let's pass these out. These are copies of the questions. I hope I have enough of them. Um, we took all that, all that chart paper we got from last time. I'm going to talk a little process for about two minutes here because I want to get to where David, I thought you brought up something that was really important. And uh, a couple other people reined in with like, you know, not too much process. How do we move this? How do we get to the details? So one of the things we're working on is there's different types of community connect, uh, community participation when you're trying to resolve an issue and last forum in this forum is what i'm going to get a little technical but it's called thick participation that means it's a time to have big discussion to think about something deeply and come up with some options and and 
information that you need to gather. There's another type when you do surveys, you see them all the time online. You know, I get a survey, there's Google Form or Survey Monkey or something, and it says, what do you feel about XYZ? And it usually has about 10 questions. And that, that's called thin participation, but you usually get a lot more thin participation than you do the thick participation. Also, that survey type of time will actually inform more people about the topic. So it goes twofold. It's a marketing campaign and at the same time saying we're looking for a little bit of input from you. So tonight's goal is to do two things. And it's really to set up, we're, as you heard last time, in May we're going to run a survey for all the communities. And hopefully we can get a lot more people to give us some bits and that will also give us some more marketing. Um, we're also having a chance to work with WCAX is going to work with us at our next meeting to start getting more information out. So we're trying to not only use the, the front porch forum and the uh, websites, but also using some of our local media. And Dave's been here the past two meetings helping us through the Times Artists with that as well. So it's been great. Um, so our two goals for tonight are to brainstorm options to help solve you know, the school start time. You're not gonna, we're not going to get to any judging of them tonight. But from looking at those options, you'd say, the next secondary goal is what I just say, what questions do we have for parents, students, and the schools to help judge those options? We're really trying to say, what are the questions we're going to ask in the survey? And some of those might not be in the survey, maybe we have to get information from the schools. And some of those are right there on the questions that you posed last time in March, on the 26th. So, um, Karen just whispered to me as I was out doing this that some people need to leave at 7, so I really want to get people to work. I thought at first I might go down through these questions to give some responses and what we know, but I think it's better to get us in a collective piece. So I think counting around the room, there's about 15 or 16 of us in here, and I think we're going to do two groups of 7 or 8. And I'm going to really, I'm going to be a little bit of, more of a stickler this time on process. Sorry, Scott, I'm looking right at you. But <laughs> I, you and I always have this nice dance that we do. And we, um, so nor, there's some norms for brainstorming. And I want to talk about the process. The norms for brainstorming is everyone gets to express their idea, but only one idea at a time. So you, if it comes to me, I don't get to say, so I think we should do this and this and this and this. No, it's one. You'll get, you'll get a chance to express all your ideas, but it's one. Because we want to hear everybody's voice. And it's, it's about everyone having equal voice at the table. Where, um, when, it, when the turn comes to you, you can say, I have an idea, or I pass, I don't have one that I want to add, or, hey, I like Karen's idea of starting all the buses at the elementary schools, and I'd like to add on to it, let's put all the kids in it. <coughs> so I can connect to it, so you can add on, okay? There's no questions while the brainstorming's happening, no clarifying questions, no, and someone needs to write them down on the chart paper. Once the whole table goes around and passes, then, you, then one of the board members is always saying, let's go back through the options and see if there's any clarifying questions. What do we mean by, hey, Karen, what do you mean by starting all the buses at the elementary schools? What do you mean by that? Okay, and then, um, then after that, you're gonna take a separate piece of chart paper and say, if we were gonna judge these options we have on here, what information would we need to have to be able to judge which one's the best solution for our district? I did that pretty quickly, but I'm trying to get us to working. What questions do you have for my quick overview of the norms and the process? I tried to post them up there on the wall. Okay, so what if we have one group of about seven or eight right with Allison? And Allison, do you mind facilitating that? I'll do my best. Okay, and then we'll have another group over here. I'm just going to try to give us more room so we don't talk over each other. Yep. Another group of seven or eight over here. And Karen or Ruben, do you want to facilitate that? Yes. Group? That'd be great. You facilitate, I'll take notes. Okay. Thank you. And we're going to probably let this go for, we're probably going to let this go to about seven, but I'll also listen to how each group's doing. So we need to be teacherly and bring yeah. Three, six. How many people are leaving at seven? I heard there were a couple. Yeah. One, two, three. Allison's two. Sorry, three are. Okay. Okay. So we'll be okay. We can keep going. All right. We'll keep going. So Scott. And so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think that's going to work. Allison. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So.
specific ways to make this happen? Yep. Yeah. It can be. It can be a piece of it. We just don't want to be a long paragraph of everything. So just an idea. But, it, but the ideas are all centered on. Yeah. <laughs> to, move to, to move towards it. Yep. All right. Yep. There's people here who don't agree. Right. That's right. And that's good. Because then we're just brainstorming what the different possibilities are. What the different possibilities are. Yeah. You mean don't agree that the school start time should be later or don't agree on how it should be? Right. Right. Anything. Um, well, that's a fine idea to put down, too. Right. That's right. the way it is. That's, that's, that's to put it down and say, yeah. 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 change. Right. How do we get that information that yeah. the majority of the people? We don't know what the majority of people think about it. We're trying to find that out. Maybe the message would be to really take a look at the advantages of keeping the the way it is now. If, if for someone who is against it, okay. maybe their input um, would be to say, make sure we really weigh the rules that we have now before we right. go. I, I'm not trying to rule out <laughs> anything <laughs> yeah. that happens. It just sounds, yeah. yeah, sorry, I may have sounded yeah. too, too like, like this is what we're doing. But yeah. it, we're trying to get to the point where we get to the, I mean, the committee's been really strong to us. And I also, you've, you've heard a lot of this, but it's the piece of, no. we want to collect the information from everybody. When we do a student survey, we're going, that's why it says, you can add, put that up there, parents, students, schools, yeah. okay. where do you want to get the information from? Okay. Okay. All right. So is that chart brainstorm? Yeah, this is the brainstorm. True brainstorm. I just hand to me so I can make sure you're in the list. So, I guess, I guess, one of the ways would be swapping Oh, I think um, no, I'm option. Build in options for especially yeah. 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 Is someone going to write? Oh, you're doing it. Uh, yeah, sorry, I can't. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can transfer it after, but. Yeah. And what's your name here, please? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> you're a that wasn't a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have been used to that. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm not going to make any. So, um, limit travel time for sports teams. Okay. If we leave, if the day starts an hour later, they get out an hour later, so they have an hour less travel time available to them. Okay. Um, I, I had never thought of this when I was looking out. Explore the impact of practicing sports before school starts based on all these studies that kids need to sleep more. <laughs> I know this seems obvious, but um, just switching the primary school to elementary schools um, bus routes or time with the, with the um, high school, middle school and then looking into um, community connection options for those elementary families who need childcare at the end of the day and maybe providing scholarships for community connections or some type of aftercare programs. I'm busy reflecting, so I'm <laughs> we don't have yeah, I think I'm going to actually pass on, on that round. Karen, you get to have ideas too. All right. <laughs> you just have to tell us where they are. Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to write um, For me, the idea that uh, was, was sort of like what Allison said, and that's uh, like starting at 9 instead of 8.30. And when it's nine, uh, I've heard that high school, you can compress. You don't need seven days. So potentially high school is nine to three, but middle school is nine to four. So being open about starting at nine, length of the school day doesn't have to be locked in the same for the same age kids, because their needs are different. Um, uh, Stephen Dellinger Pate has said, give me the middle schoolers for that extra hour, and I can really show you something. So. So we go around again, because everyone. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
employers who have three three to nine shifts that rely on high school students, it would be great to get okay. um, buy-in from employers and other sort of you know, uh, dance schools, I, not to, uh, athletics, mm -hmm. not that you know, try to reveal things that are going on in my life, but um, for people who are worried about shifts and things yeah. that um, relate to family economics and mobility of kids, that it would be great to have some voices of those folks at the table, you know, sh shining a green light. <coughs> we can see a way to work this and, and modify to have people not lose their jobs or have to leave school early. May I ask what like what employers are you thinking of? Maple corn star. Yeah, my I mean Shaw's is flexible. I have some flexibility. Sure, but I'm not sure everybody. I mean, I think that to have those people around the table to say yes. You know, we can shift. So we're now getting yeah. that like, you'd ask me. We're getting a little bit more into the discussion. It's just the brain. Yeah, yeah. Follow up question. Yeah. You get to there. You get to the point where you can have that open. Just getting everyone. Yeah. Or any of that. I'm Heather Scandale. And yes. just my only thought is it will be important to put out the message of how U32 will strategize with <coughs> other schools for the logistical planning of yes. extracurricular activities. Um, but if you were to start at nine, um, it can be done. I just think that would be an important message to whether or not someone's earlier for the special needs kids, but David, you're also uh, one possibility is that all the schools start at the same time. And in my case, that would include, uh, to be clear, I'm not proposing that this is what we should do. <laughs> it's brainstorm. Yeah. But it's a possibility, a so, logistical possibility. Yeah, that was actually the same thing that I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, one of the questions that I was asked when I was, uh, they gave us homework for the uh, committee members was um, if we switch the start times, do we negatively impact elementary school students? And I've heard multiple people in this room, or at least two people, say that they have young children who started at a 7.30 start time. But I was just thinking about my own kids. And I certainly, none of my three kids, I even have a lark, and he, I mean, he'll get up at 6 but sometimes 6.30 if he's tired. I'm so sorry. But we, um, <laughs> that would kill yeah. me. <laughs> but we have a hard time. Like, I mean, you know, I have a hard, like they really need their time. I would have to get them up in the fives to be able mm. to get them on the bus, for sure, absolutely. So I'm not sure if everybody's in that boat, but, um, and then I did look at some data on this. There is actually uh, precious little data on younger children starting. There's one person, Peggy Keller, who's done the best work she can. None of this data is like a double-blind study. You can't do that in this situation. Um, it seems like there may be some negative impacts, but that, that doesn't seem to be what people here are saying. So I'm interested in that. Um, impacts of having younger ch children start earlier. Like it doesn't affect them as much, but there were um, behavioral Behavioral changes in behavior, there were changes in, in test scores for the three to six cohort. Um, and I don't know whether or not that's weighted toward the, the sixth graders versus the oh, three to six great. Since okay. we test we since we do testing on three to third to third graders and sixth through sixth, right. we don't really have standardized test scores for younger kids, we don't know. Um, so yeah, I kind of I was I was wondering about doing the same time, and I I'm actually quite interested in doing a, not just eight to eight thirty, but eight to nine, <laughs> or even eight to nine thirty for high school students, if that's really gonna help them. And I realize that makes things very late, but anyway. I'd like to know uh, which schools that we either engage with through athletics mm -hmm. or theater or, or debate club or whatever also have different start and end times. Because the kids right now, if they have a game or if they, whatever the event is, they might <coughs> be on the bus at 2 o'clock or 1.30, depending on how far they have to go. And they're already saying, wow, if, if so I miss a, an hour or half an hour of school that I have to make up, if we're going later into the day, I'm going to miss a lot of academics. Yeah. Unless so all the schools are doing the same thing. This discussion about when it's going to happen should also be in conjunction with um, Julie, right? Yeah. So I can't ask clarifying questions yet. No, we get to okay. a round of pass. So you, it's okay. easy to pass or to have Yeah, I'll on. just pass. The only other thought that I have is I guess I'm still stuck on busing for myself and for the kids that I see come in the door and the busing issues that we have every day with the small range of ages that we have. 
Um, that I would really like to not see busing change in terms of putting all the kids on one bus from five-year-old to 17-year-old scares me just a little bit because I worked in a district for that before. And it was, we had a person that we hired and their job was to watch bus tapes every day and deal with busing issues every day across in our district because there were that many issues with that many kids on the buses. Well, so, you in Middlesex was having issues on the buses too. Say that again. It wasn't just you. Middlesex was okay. having issues on the bus. No, I mean the, the district that I worked in, oh, okay. we had five-year-olds <clears throat> all the way to 17-year-olds. We hired a person at our elementary school whose job was to spend the first two hours of every day watching bus tapes and dealing with bus issues because there were so many, and it was overwhelming for the principal, right? Um, so I just worry about um, combining that age group and what that will do for our kids coming in the door each day. Will they be ready to learn um, with the small amount we have? We have kids that struggle in the morning because they have small issues in the bus. Um, if we push it really significantly to say a 9.30, you know, I mean, I'm just wondering whether there's a point where if we were to push it so late that um, in fact we would there would then be um, pressure to utilize morning time for things like athletic practices or lessons or enrichment that might necessitate an early bus whereas now we are having a bus. Like would that just switch flip that? And is that something to consider in you know, only so many hours in the day to get a lot done? And we're just Throwing up um, <clears throat> ideas and I have time. Hold on. You can come back. Clarify. Well, oh, oh I have it. I'm sorry. Okay. We've gone around twice with ideas. Yes. Yes. And and you're on the spot, so you also. Well, could it be could it be that there's a lot of It's an add-on to yours, where the day wouldn't necessarily be extended. We would start later and end at the same time. Less teaching minutes. If, if we are considering excellent like for less teaching yeah. minutes. Uh, <laughs> they don't need lunch. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have swapped the times and start at the same time, and then one of the other obvious ones that I don't think is on the list yet is shift them both later. That both elementary starts later and high school starts later than the existing. Should we also Okay. Think about um, I had thought about, so and this is a little more in the weeds, but uh, trying to do things, and make later times in the day, new initiatives and changes sort of allocated time. for certain things like physical education um, or, or I mean, I know they need recess in the middle of the day, but I was just wondering if we could do something with the way we schedule the day so that once the kids get toward the end of the day, they think it's less demanding of them. Um, and I haven't exactly kind of sussed that out how that would go, but I think there's some research on that though too. I don't know what that is. Turning mm -hmm. into, but that does indicate that if you partition kind of the the energy exercise blow off part as the later part of the day, it actually enhances the learning earlier in the day. So. Uh, I just more just had a question. Are you getting feedback? I can do questions now, right? Are you getting feedback that um, the kids are concerned about a later start day and what that would look like? And their academics. And, well, yeah, we we haven't we we haven't done anything with the kids yet. We right. know we need to. In a formal way. I'm sure Sue has a lot from just being in the building. But we have we don't That's have. That's why I'm just curious. <laughs> right. Yeah. This is a solution, but I just thinking about the new system for grading and the performance indicators and the um, showing proficiency and if there is a way for kids to still have a shorter academic day, still get their extracurriculars and right, and still be able to show proficiency because it's a different grading system than we're used to. Can you reiterate the question again? You mean like what we're trying to answer with our brainstorming? 
Um, I think the, the main focus, although there's, there's certainly been a little go in other directions, which is great, is then are there any specific ideas for how we might implement a later start time? Or if you have things that you're opposed to later start time, you know, you might like to do that. Um, picking up on the scheduling question, which is can be a nightmare to open up, but um, really looking uh, at the transitions that happen during the day and how many blocks are in a day and how that time is used and the more transitions students have during each day, in other words, the, no the greater the number of blocks and things that they do, the greater the amount of time is lost in those transitions because it has to be you know, four minutes or whatever it is. So sometimes we can carve time, but maybe that work has already been done. I don't totally respect U32's U <laughs> um, process around that. Um, but it would be worth taking a look at that to see um, if there are efficiencies within the day that could allow With the idea of starting later and ending at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I, there's a limit to how many minutes you can carve yeah. through that. But. You're wonking this process here. <laughs> Fear of treading on ground has probably been tread over a number of times. To me, it's um, the, uh, the, the the research and evidence shows that it makes sense. So, I think it's you know how do we. How do we communicate that with the uh, overall school uh, district? And um, from from the perspective that this is this isn't just about screwing up time. It's just because someone tells us to do it. The evidence shows that it's it's really important for kids. It makes sense for kids. Maybe really important might be stretching, but it makes sense based on the evidence and the research. Um, and I think that process is very important because it is a, no, it is a, it is a shift. And people, you know, it's shifting a lot of, it's creating a lot of havoc. I'm sure it's creating a lot of heart, heartburn for perhaps teachers as well, their parents and so forth who, have, who are on this schedule. So I think it is important that process. Of, uh, someone mentioned the Boston, you know, where they just did it by fiat. Yeah, that, that doesn't work, right? So it's, it's making the case and, and making that important. So I summarize that as need for broad yes, and effective <laughs> outreach and communication for the change. Okay. I wrote mine in there. Um, add sixth grade to the middle school. Yes. They are middle schoolers. So. <laughs> um, consider other school-related um, factors on that may impinge on sleep, sleep, thinking like homework. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm also aware of some places that have all year round. I'm not saying we should be moving to that, but it's not what we think about the Okay. My wife already feels like we don't have a long enough summer. So. I said the calendar is one of the longest in the United States. I mean, I don't know where Vermont sits, but from Michigan, I mean, it's like 15 days longer. You know, I have relatives in South Dakota that start at the end of July, <laughs> but that's all harvest related stuff. So. Okay. okay. And to, yeah, I just feel like it's a really long calendar. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Brainstorming, not proposing. Right. <laughs> Maybe we look at those two vacations that we have so close together, the February and the April. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, yeah, I was also just trying to think about the flexible schedule. You know, what can we do to maintain what we need, but 
be more flexible with our start time. And I don't have a good feel for that. Um, do we, anybody else want to go around with brainstorming or can we start yeah, asking? Yeah, one more please. thing. Um, I, the issue of the kids leaving school early for sports, that's a, that's a real issue and it's, it's actually often even more than an hour, okay. an hour and a half, um, depending on where they're going. And so it can be, and the, the difficulty from, as, from a parent perspective is that they lose they don't lose just one class, they lose, you know, a third of, well, they lose either a third or a half of what's being taught that week for that particular class because of the, because they have the long blocks. And, um, and I have, I kind of have a preference for the shorter blocks, but I'm not a teacher, so I, I deferred, I would like to hear the teacher's perspective on the block, the blocking and the way it's done. Um, but that, I would prefer to go back to the, shorter classes because then you, the very next day you're going back into the class so the loss isn't isn't as great as it is especially if you have a Monday and a Thursday where you have a game or something then you can really lose out and it can be challenging mm -hmm. so I that I guess I would like to hear from the teachers about what they think about the current system and whether that's an open for discussion will this cost okay yeah right so I'm really interested, Bill has mentioned that once he said this is totally doable. So in your mind, if those schools are such a time, will the bus look like? All right. So I'll stick these up. You know, I don't know what we have one about bus runs, but I'm wondering about the one bus runs. I agree. Yeah, I mean, maybe just try and one bus run. Figure it out. Flip bus schedules. Um, I'll add there. Um, one of the other things I want, I mean, there's lots of little things I want to look at, and I want to try to keep the operational in the way I, the reason I'm saying that is because I believe we can solve the problem. It may mean we're going to have to, we're going to have to get to a point where we need this feedback from the whole community, like, what's your priority? You know, is is K twelve kids not riding together? Is that a, a showstopper? That's like the number one showstopper. We just need we can get that from information back. In the and so we need to know that. You know, are sports a showstopper? They were last time this was done. That was the showstopper. Was don't don't change the athletics. And do you think that the day can be designed so that whatever is offered in the afternoons in that last hour of the block? is something that kids either take more than once a week, right? Or have more. So I would say if we get into school scheduling, I'm sorry for that. I know, I know it's a nasty thing to it, open it, up. It school. will be a Pandora's box, yeah. and it really should be left to the high school staff. I do know. I've been down through, I've, li I've taught in probably, I'm a former high school teacher. I taught in probably four or five different schedules. You make work what you got. And it works. Yeah. It, it's not that big a deal. I taught in long blocks for an hour and a half, and I taught 45 minutes seconds every day. So, but that one idea is supportive of the right. whole do the exercise portion of the day later in the day right. because if a kid's missing their gym class for the week, it's that big deal if they're going to missing it to go do gym. So I want, we're, I'm still going to keep us on the goal that we had was like, what information would you need? You know, we should review these, Susan Claire, and please write on the chart paper what information do we need to gather. Okay. From a broader perspective, David, I'm so glad you started out that way too. Right on. We need more info. What's that going to help us judge this list? And the idea of doing this list was to get you so this <coughs> way to judge that. I have one question that I think you can answer. We don't need a community yeah. answer. What's the longest bus ride anybody has here? About an hour. Oh my. The, and those are high ride. schoolers, right? Because they've got to come all the way across the district. Uh, the bus stops no. at my house at 645. Yeah. And gets here at? Well, it was the start time. Most of them are here at 730 to 745. Yeah. It, our longest bus rides are down in Berlin, near Northfield. Oh, that's our longest ride. Because we have buses that have to go into Northfield and come back out of Northfield. For parts of and, you can't, and you can't get to that side of uh, Much Berlin. No, no, you can't. None of these. You can get to that side of Berlin without going through Montpelier, so you're dealing with Montpelier traffic. Right. 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 
All right, so let's look at some of these questions and see what, what information will we need to be able to assess. Um, so Julie mentioned swapping school start times, elementary to high school. And Callie mentioned flip flopping the buses so that they would also just so what information will we need to see if that we, that's going to work? Yeah. But we still have a, I haven't seen the research so, from um, early start times for elementary school. It's pretty limited. Yeah. Or, or I was asked So then I guess, I guess more information from schools that have done it for a long period of time. I know the Burlington area, for example, yep. has been starting at 730 and 745 for a long time. So maybe talking to... Getting information from that district on how early start time goes for elementary kids. Chitney East. Because if we can't find it, right? If we can't do the research. So adult work. Adult work. So are you saying that that's, a, that's something we should strive for? Uh, I mean, it's an idea, yeah. Um, to basically have, because right now we have school day, and then we have all this after school stuff, which is happening at school, with school personnel, with school students, and yet it's, and, and not only that, for most of the students, it's the stuff they really like, that they're really excited about, and yet it's, it's only, it's considered the late bus. I mean, if we were to integrate, everything that happens at school into a single day um, and schedule it during the day so that it makes sense. So that, you know, potentially sports are happening um, when it's light outside in the winter um, or, or whenever. And then you could have other activities you know, um, just so open it up in that way. So Scott, if I'm pointing, this was your other idea, include after school activities, yeah, extracurricular within school day. So to me, those sound like they go hand in hand. They, they, yes. Okay. I've got twins, so we'll do A-B testing. <laughs> so like longer day, more integration. <laughs> so would an example be you had like your baseball practice from two to three, and then you went back to the classroom. Potentially, okay. you went to band or you did homework or whatever, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, so maybe that yeah. Yeah. the curricular band is somewhere I want to And then it includes uh, everybody. At a consistent time and includes everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a really interesting idea. I taught it in Greenwich, Greenwich Country Day School in Connecticut, and they had that. All kids did sports. And they were there to four. And all the kids did sports. So I, I don't know if this is part of it, but the process, step number four, is what information do we need to judge the options. So when I heard that, I would go back to one of the other questions is the cost analysis. Is, if that's actually something that's going to be under consideration, I, I gotta believe that's an expensive way to do it. Not, not a, yeah, mm -hmm. not, not that that's a, a game changer to stop it, but, I, but it just seems like if you run your school day from 9 to 5 instead of mm -hmm. 9 to 3 or something like that, that there's cost considerations that yeah. that have to be accounted for. So, uh, exactly. I, I think cost analysis is sort of um, an overarching... Yeah. Correct. Right. 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 Every single right. 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 For yes. all of us. Yeah. 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 <coughs> I lost some vocabulary there. So I'm going to start writing down the information we need. And I'm just putting the little one to connect those two. And I put cost of such a thing. <laughs> um, so modeling. We need, a, we need like a model of what that would like cost per student, that type of thing. And other, other, are the other school districts doing it anywhere? Anybody else doing it? Well, Washington West. They're in my classroom at 7.30. The first time we're here. I don't know what time Harwood starts. Well, we start at 10 but the kids are usually going at 7.30. And you know, I can't remember after talking to Can I add on to that comment? Because um, other schools, even outside of Vermont, yeah. they tend to get parochial, and I get it. We do things best here in this state. And I actually do believe that a lot of times, but, but I think it's good to look, you know, what's, is there a school district in California that's doing this, or some other place that, you know, it's working, or they at least 
they've plowed through that field, and we and can see what, how it works. Kind of therapists. I mean, I, I can say that I'm sure. So that was interesting. Absolutely sure that some private academies do this. Yeah. And that's the way they structure the day. And, yeah. you know, the kids on the hockey team, you know, leave at 1 yeah. o'clock to go do something, and then the next day, you know, so that they do incorporate it that way because yeah. they live there. Right. You know. That might be hard to compare yeah. to that, but, but maybe there are other public school districts that they, they do it. Yeah. So. I do want to keep the um, elementary kids in mind. I know I was talking to a teacher at Rumby who would love to switch the day, not because of the earlier start times, but because of the earlier release times, saying his kindergartner is at you know, 3.30 in the afternoon. They're just spent. So this 9 to 5 might, I don't know, just to take into consideration the elementary age or the developmental needs of well, different age kids. So this might be an option for high school. Yeah, middle, high school. middle school is yeah. where I see. Yeah, right, middle high. Option. Yeah, yeah. And then... You know, something right. different. Right. The other ones are getting the trouble. Yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah, that, that is definitely, yeah. they, they peak yeah. anything after lunch. Yeah. I hear that from a lot of teachers. Yeah. Um, all right. We ready to go on? Do we want to, is there any, are there any of these others that we want to, that kind of fall into a full day? That we want to, how we're doing it. I guess this kind of goes with it. And so on a little bit. Yeah. Oh, down the one down the low. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I'm not exactly sure how to summarize it because I also know that I'm going to So, um, um, the sports yeah, practice before school, <clears throat> is that, uh, does that mean that also you just negated the idea of sleeping well, in? Well, that's why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said that, you know? <laughs> it does it. Yes. Our sophomore, then, like, he, he was at first in fitness six, this morning so at 6 a.m. Yeah. So there is some motivation yeah. to... Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's brutal. brutal. Yeah. Yeah. That's brutal well, as an adult. I know. <laughs> I can imagine being somewhere at 6 yeah. in the morning. Yeah. 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 16 in exactly. And some of the problem is as spring when the outdoors isn't available, and so they're yeah. trying to use limited indoor spaces. That's correct. That, that, that is, is true. There might be some. So, to your point, I think that's a good point. Of certain, I, I hate those morning practices, right. but I understand them for the, for the beginning part of the yeah. spring season. Yeah, you know, my but cross I'm, teams practice down at the ice center. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. And absurd hours. Probably. I think hockey teams practice in the morning anyway, don't they? Because ice time a is A lot of them hard. do because the ice yeah. time is, yeah. again, difficult to, so, so precious. So start mm -hmm. it just be a two so that... Mm -hmm. Which is also curious. So this one sort of goes with the same theme because potentially... So, Karen, what did you mean by start at nine different school <laughs> I meant something like, you know, 9 to 4 or 9 to 5 middle. So Stephen Dellinger Pate spoke to that and talked about the fact that high schoolers really don't need as much time in school. And middle schoolers could actually use more. They're more efficient. More intensely focused yep. for a shorter time. Yep. Right. I mean, if you think about your AP classes, you, you did and what you did in the class, and then it was time you needed out of class to build on that learning, with, whether you're building a project or a website or whatever you're doing. So it's more, sort, of, sort of more like what you do in college, too, and as we're trying to prep for. Moving toward project-based learning more in public yeah. education, even in primary school, we're doing it more in primary school. Yeah. yeah. Well, and also uh, flexible pathways and personalized learning yes. right. with By high school, more opportunity yeah. to be out, out and, and about the community. Right. Yeah. 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 For this one, flexibility. That actually, for me, when I look at that one, like, oh God, and then there's a there's a transportation one that um, yep. that uh, goes with that, and then the accommodation for. The BCC students. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the theme, the running theme, I think, is pay attention to these subpopulations right. that have particular scheduling or, um, or other needs or requirements. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and make sure that those are taken account of. And Karen, in the middle of the second page, consider less privileged families. Yeah. Yeah. kind of goes in the same way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, if they're counting on high school kids to be babysitting right. for their younger children. Yeah. And explore enhanced community connections and scholarships. Yeah, definitely one of those. Right there, yeah. That was it. And uh, just to good thing. So, if question. What are our <laughs> what information would we need for that aspect? We would about making sure that the transportation and community connections and needs are met, right? So. I think that you also it also falls in with the union too, because for my son, he's going to miss classes probably, depending, especially if you do a nine o'clock start, he's going to miss classes at the end of the day every week which is going to put him behind, which is really tough. So allowing, say, someone who has a flexible schedule who can come in early to teach that class that he's missing. Or flexible scheduling, to schedule something at that time. You know, if you have flexible scheduling, it might be a flex time or a study or something at the time. You wouldn't miss a class or... Well, that's ideal, but that's not yeah. always possible. We're talking, he has three therapies a week. Um, so I have to, I would have to pull him out, and you know he can't go all day without lunch because you can't have lunch at the end of the day. Yeah. He'd be a beast. Um, so what are you going to put at the end of the day that's not difficult going into tenth grade that he's going to miss that he can even a nine to two like she was saying high school would be like nine to two. Um, then you get into the transportation issues because <laughs> I got to get to work. My husband's got to get to work, so now you got to get a vehicle and make it up my driveway, yeah. and it's 500 feet with an embankment on one side. So we 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 can't solve all any of these mm -hmm. problems here today. I think the idea is simply to figure out what what do we need to do to to, to mm -hmm. address, yeah. address those, you know, what, yeah. Yeah. Alternative learning models are a different mm -hmm. way that yeah. you can learn keeping it in mind because it's just not yeah. my child. There are yeah. other kids. Right. Right. No, we right, right. Um, that are going to run into this. So one of the reflections that I had, and maybe moving us <laughs> to a different topic, but your opt-out um, idea um, intrigues and worries me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like the idea of there being a sort of a safety valve for families for whom it just doesn't work. Oh, yep, that's right. That goes. That's, oh, it's, second. Second. It's, it's the second, second one. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a little related. Um, I, my So how, how do, I guess the question for me would be, how do we um, align everybody's interests? Um, this is some of the work that I do in my own company, and uh, you know, how, how do we make sure that, that, our, that all of the stakeholders' interests are sort of pulling in the same direction, mm -hmm. so that the opt-out doesn't get abused? Yeah. Right. I, I, I get that. Um, in, a, in a project like this, there's no way 100% of the people are going to be happy. You, oh, you, you, no, you that just, I understand. You just cannot, you just cannot solve every, everybody's problem when, with a change like this. You cannot. Yeah. And, and so the question is, so the people for that, it's really, really difficult. Do you just, you know, keep turning cartwheels in an attempt to, in an attempt to uh, deal with their very specific individual need, or do you say, you know what, it, there's a perfectly good school just down the street that well, would, be, would be a better, a better, a better choice better. for you? Build and, in, and so, you know, um, what you, you spell that out clearly, want that. There, what no, options course, right. there are, if, if, there, if we can't accommodate, what, how can we? You know, there, there's a way, like you said, whether it's another school, whether it's another way to, to cover that material that is being missed, with no penalty for those early dismissal on those days, that type of thing. Yeah. And we already have tuition, some choice, mm -hmm. some tuition options, tuition we're waiver building options. more of that in. Oh, yeah. Time goes so there on. already are, you know, kids from Montpelier and kids from Montpelier. Right. We wouldn't we have, have to pay tuition, tuition if you were to do it. Right. There, uh, there I, are, I think there that would be a way to. There, right. there already are ways to do that. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. It happened a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I, I know we could be it's, it's afraid that we're losing students and therefore, you know, mm -hmm. funding, but we probably also find a lot of people out there in the world who say, gee, I'd like to go to U30. Mm -hmm. You know, we already have that, but now I have another reason to go to U32 because mm -hmm. it's got a more sensible well, yeah. approach to dealing with kids. So, uh, um, so I put a two on the limit travel time for sports. I open this because it always gets <laughs> on this room. Um, no, 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 no. Well, yes, sports, sports, transportation, and child care are the three classic mm -hmm. um, problems that schools are not to. But if we need more, infor what information would we need? To me, I would need to know what teams go where, when, that type of thing. So some examples of current schedules to see if there was flexibility. And, and it's certainly not winter sports, really. They tend to play in the evenings in the summer and then in the spring cross, although they have longer, do longer evenings in the spring because it seems lighter, lighter. But soccer's a big one. Well, nobody has I mean, can, you, can you load up the weekend schedule if you can't travel? If you're not going to drive to Newport on a Wednesday night and go there on a Saturday morning, is that, you know, how many times can you do that? So, or do you yeah. have to go to Newport? Yeah. Right. Or do you, yeah. That can, is, are there other that's other questions? Questions? I have two to kids in sports, and I'm like, you're going where? Yeah. <laughs> I get it. We're in a rural place and all that. Yeah, and all that but there are a lot of schools sometimes. within an hour. I, yeah, my, I'm my, always like, how come we're not playing this school and we're going to Newport? I, and and I, I'm sure there's a good reason for it, but I'm just, maybe we need to really say, yeah, that, there's a good reason, but there's a better reason to keep them closer. Yeah. I think it's mostly the old divisions. Yeah, yeah probably. One, two, three, and it's the size of the school. They yeah. try to keep like-sized schools. Do you have like which to makes play every team, every school in your division? And yeah. Another big time right. sucker thing is like drama, you know, if they're right. putting on a show. I would, I would actually just replace the sports with yeah. extracurricular. Yeah. 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 That would be my friend. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, except, <laughs> except drama doesn't travel. Yeah, do they travel? No, drama but they come. Travel. So if I'm thinking of like a reconfigured school day, you know, if, two hours of drama practice, four nights a week, versus you've got one hour of play, five days a week that you know that you get to rehearse during school. But. So, uh, right. Well, that's, that starts at 7:30. I'm kind of curious, how many of them are like? They do travel. Those are ours. Just doesn't matter. I work at They dribbling, but I get there by eight, which is not much. So, bus schedules. Flip or come on bus schedules. What more information do we need? Well, call, you said transportation, so. Can you do it? Yeah. How long are the kids on the bus for? Are they going to be, are they going to be too long a ride? Yeah. Well, I think the reality is that, um, my gut says with the fleet of buses that we have now, if we actually ran them closer to full, acknowledging that there's no way that we're getting every kid to we pass the house up mm -hmm. on the bus in a particular run. Um, but we'd be pretty close to being able to optimize the routes and keep, you know, keep within statutes so that nobody's on the bus for more than an hour each way a day. Mm -hmm. You know, those those things. Even when you start doing the hub and spoke, and I, I mean, I, again, I lived this. I went to Harwood. I was on the complete like. And I was on the bus at 6.55 in the morning. Yeah. You know, hair frozen because I just got out of the shower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and got off the bus at 8, uh, sorry, at 7.50. So it was an hour and five minutes each way. Um, and that was, you know, I frankly wouldn't wish that on anybody. But the reality is that there are people who live where they live, and it's that far away. It's already happening. It the U32 like, kids. I mean, it's are happening to the Worcester kids. Middlesex, now. Worcester, yeah. Callis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the hub and spoke model actually meshes pretty nicely with. Um, with the idea of the elementary schools having a little shorter day, because if sorry, it, it doesn't it does exactly the opposite. Never mind. <laughs> but the way that the 
but the Harwood District the worked is the buses would be out in the field, they'd go to the elementary school and drop the elementary kids off, and the high school kids would, uh, would go to. And a lot of the buses in Harwood now, the high school kids don't ride. They're on their own anyway, so it's not what they But on that, yeah, yeah. what percentage of students drive to school? The regular buses don't come yet. Or get dropped off. Or get dropped right, off. Right. That's where I was going. Yeah. Lots like of people that. work in this community. This town, right? Not your area. Lots of kids get dropped off right. on their way by school. Yeah. So the busing schedule is kind of irrelevant. Yeah. I will say. I mean, the, 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 the buses that are the fullest are U32 morning. That those of all the four runs. That's when they're they though they get pretty full. But in particular, the reason I'm interested in that driving question is because it seems to me when I was an 11 year old kid myself back in high school, because we all have experience. Right. I drove myself to school, and it, you know my, my parents were kind of out of the picture at that point. You know they could go off to work at whatever hour they had to go, and then I went to school when I had. To. Are you making the connection where you feel maybe then that will cause a problem if they go to work with their families? Right. Well, okay. what, what right I'm making, now they won't be able to. And well, actually. What I was trying to make the connection was if they're driving themselves, is that there is at least uh, I'm not actually sure where I'm going with that, honestly. But just thinking to myself that for some percentage of the body, <coughs> the, 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 the rest of the family logistics don't matter because they're not involved in it, they're managging themselves. Yeah. 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 Talk or and that was asked in the last meeting too. Can we put some informational pieces on the survey? On the survey, yeah. and we can do that with either Google or Survey Monkey. We have we have a, we have a Survey Monkey account. We have tons of read it prior to yeah. answering the questions. And to be honest, I get a lot of surveys. It should be bulleted information. It should be here's here's information from the. A couple of surveys that we know about start times for adolescents, right? And then some quick bulleted. People are not going to read a gigantic paragraph from the takers or they're just not. I mean, it's sad to say, but some bulleted information. It needs to be quick bulleted information that yep. is easy to access. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. And make sure you're. It's accessible for all, right? Because right. some of our and I'd actually like to help with the design of that to the point of like one of the things. So I'm a computer geek by trade, <laughs> and which may have been obvious. I don't know, but um, I'm really concerned about user interface and user experience. And one of the huge things there can be like. As a scientist, it bothers me when I see people throwing out stats without providing support for them. And it is absolutely right that it's great to provide the short synopsis, but it should be linked to whatever is the source of that data. I agree. So. But it needs to be accessible information for all people, and, and some people aren't able to read the, the detailed right. research, right? Um, so how do we get it to everybody? Yeah. I'm just going to check and see where they're at. Yep. So some, if you have another one, put it on there. <laughs> what have you heard from the students? Like, what are their feelings? Um, well, definitely their first reaction is always, oh, sure, I'd love another half hour to sleep in the morning. Right. That's right. Yeah. Except for her kids. Yeah. <laughs> No, 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 when they were little. Oh, okay. No, no, now. The best days are the two hour delay. Yeah. 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 I've heard other people say, well, that means I can stay up late. But we wish, maybe, but. There was information at the last meeting that showed that that didn't actually happen. Yeah. Somebody, somebody talked about that. that yeah. that's, that's, that's the concern of a lot of people. But I, and I don't know what the, where that data came from, but mm -hmm. um, it wasn't actually the best way to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if at the same time that they hear that, you know, half hour later start time, that they're also hearing half hour later dismissal time. Probably not. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know, because I, kids, they talk about that all the time, about being tired. I wish you could sleep longer. So I'm not sure they really care. Like, my kids don't care that we have snow days and that school goes longer. They're like, I don't care. I'd rather have a snow day than go later into June. I'm not going to notice. I'm not going to notice that I have extra days in June. But I right. do notice that I have a snow day. Right. No delay gratification. Right. <laughs> right. Like immediate satisfaction. Yeah. 
for a lot of. So they may not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell them we can go an hour later and have a siesta in the middle of the day. Yeah, so, there are an awful lot of kids Number coming five. in late. Mine amongst oh, them. And I have no excuse for my kids are really close by. But, um, our, uh, they, like, the line out the I don't know if you've ever seen it. Oh, I've, a, been, I've been here. Oh, every yeah. single day, there's a yeah. line out the door. At well, what's eight, the eight At 8 o'clock with the turkeys. I'm curious, oh, yeah. people sitting here as adults, I mean, was it difficult for you to go to I was a weird kid. I was a, I can so, I can still remember thinking back to it that at that some point I felt like I got so much it was so cool for me that I would actually get up at like four o'clock in the morning to get myself ready and go and this is totally not me as an adult so I can't even relate to who this kid was and get to high school though like the instant the doors open because it was a great time for me like to go to the computer lab or just to be in the quiet school like, and so I went as early as I could when I had the choice. And yeah, like again, as an adult, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Kid, my kids want to wake me up at seven. And I'm like, oh, God, oh, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a night owl now. I, don't know. I can't, I I can't even picture and, and I think a lot of my colleagues I had three well. sisters. I had one of my sisters to oh, sleep and just sleep. And my mom drove the bus, so she would get on the bus and she would leave the food on the table and she would get us all up. And then my, other, my sister would go right back to bed. Um, and we would be yelling because we could see the bus coming down the road on the other side of the field and it would go down to the corner and then it would come up the side and my mom was driving the bus, you had to be there, right? The bus um, and we'd be yelling downstairs, which is where she slept and she'd be like, the bus is on the other road! And she'd come flying out of her room, somehow miraculously dressing herself up the stairs. She was always the last one to like roll out of bed, like comb her hair with her hands and like be at the bus stop. But she could not. Yeah, get out. Describing my freshman right now. <laughs> well, so, but now I have to ask though. Oh, okay. Now I also wonder like that. how much is different with the. And I don't mean to put a buzzword on, but that whole helicopter parenting yeah, yeah, and this yeah. idea of you can't have free range kids. Yeah. And, you know, socially, how does this fit in? Because when I was a kid, too, my mother was also a school bus driver, and so she had to go get to the bus station and get her bus and everything. And it was up to my sister and me to, to get out and get to the school bus stop by herself. My dad was totally out of the picture, not relevant. And so, I mean, this was something we did from 10 years old on our own. So, like, are we maybe not kind of expecting enough responsibility for some of the kids too. Yeah. 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 It depends. Oh, and that's a pretty huge class. I mean, yeah. I don't think we're going to resolve that survey that. monkey. <laughs> so they, they needed like five, ten minutes, which yeah. I know. <laughs> and then I said we'd all <laughs> move over there. Which way is the restroom from here? Uh, I David, just go right out here, right through the double doors, almost take a U-turn to your right. Good, thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, so. Are they numbering? Uh, they were. <laughs> they were connecting some. They were connecting some pieces. Oh, yes, you said it too. Have like late starts. No, it, it no. starts. Starts or, at eight. Call the quarter. Or early dismissal for students. Like I don't know. That's like a, I'm not a high school. You yeah. know, educator, so, so I don't know. But some <laughs> high schools do like flexible start for it's, certain it's, students. Right. So yeah. You get yeah. upperclassmen at certain high schools. Yeah. They do certain things as well. But um, we don't we don't have study halls. I mean, we just don't because they're gone with a block schedule. Uh, we've got four blocks a day. Um, we have blue and white days. Yeah. And so they're just not there. So we want to hear directed study. They have directed study. Callback. Right. Callback is yeah. It's it's a flex time to say if you need a teach you can say hey I need to go see Bill and I need yeah, the student can say that I can say to students. I need you to come. Um, my daughter, PA, has that right now. They started the shoots. It's more of like an office hours type of thing, and they kids need to get stuff done. I know, like my daughter says it to me every day, like, yeah, I plan to do that during class time. Like, hey, whatever you can do, kiddo. Uh, you know, it's trying to give the kids also some more responsibility of like, how do you, how do you do that? And I know, like, the AP classes starting. Um, Starting about now, they're so using every the callback they can mm -hmm. to get the kids back in. What time is like directed study and callback? Is that well, callback, callback is, like callback <coughs> is from 8 to 8 15, yes. okay. and then callback uh, runs about, and so you're going to have to help me here because I'm 5 to 1 15, yeah. 
And they every Monday they always meet in their TA to select and where. That has to be taught I was in two TAs on Monday in here, and they were you know, choosing like, hey, I need you to go see Sue today. Like, I'm add in what I'm missing here because you live it every day. I don't it's a great. I love callback. Yeah. It's really, I mean, the first year, that was one of those things, like, the details are going to be rough the first year, and they were, right? Especially that first month and a half. But we got the software working to help schedule all the kids, because they literally get scheduled every Monday for the rest of the week. Okay. Can any change? Yeah, if you find the... That like well, your kid was absent right. Tuesday, right, and missed all yeah. of Tuesday, and yeah. so, all so the teacher schedules. The, the TA does. The TA, the TA does yeah. until they're in high school. Then they start scheduling themselves, and we just check in on their schedule and make sure they're seeing the teachers that. Yeah, the teacher. And then that, and the teacher, the teacher can request it. Yeah. The kid can say, "I want to do it." Yeah. You know, so there's there are different ways to make that happen. Right. So it's like a university model. Like, it is. It is. Yeah. It's very much university yeah. office hours, yeah, but like we that. want you all around. Mm -hmm. And you got to be somewhere. Right. So this goes back to scheduling. So Sue's my TA. I could be. Mm -hmm. And it happens every week, every Monday. So could that be the end of the day? I mean, it, goes it, could be, it could be many different places. Yeah. yeah. It just happens. But I'm just thinking as far as kids not missing athletics, if some of that more flexible time. Yeah. yeah, I think that's something they could. I'd want to do. Correct me if I'm wrong. All kids can play sports regardless of grades, correct? So that's where it becomes a little tricky, right? So if you have call back and you have kids who really need to be calling back, right? But they're choosing to play sports, it's hard to meet their needs when they're not trying to meet their needs. I think it's That's actually, okay. the, so the schools that have implemented this, I found it's really key to have it like in the center of the day. Yeah. Not yeah. to have it you have everybody together, yeah. because then you start getting yeah. into some attendance yeah. issues. And but it's proficiency-based. Yeah. And appointments tend to be on this type of yeah. Grades are, I don't know, grades and athletics. The research is in, I mean, it's all over the place. Right, but it works with like, oh. Oh, what do you see? In your oh, it's antiquated. Grades, you have to have a certain grade to play off of to do extracurriculars. It, I feel it's an antiquated model. It's not really. But that's just the thing. Yes. Okay, why don't we go down and join this group and we'll do a review of <laughs> things that we talked about. What's that? Yeah, the grade. Oh, grades and harmonics yeah. tied together. Yeah. I have mixed feelings. Was it that way here for a while? It was for a while. I just feel like. So, so the other thing was, should we consider other changes at the same time? This was yeah, so let's go together. Let's go together. Yeah. Yes, that's kind of the same. Okay. Now that I've suggested this, I really hesitate to open too many cans of worms. Yeah, even though know, they're worth opening because it's you know you want to if you're trying to get a later start time, then it's not. Burden it with all the baggage of all this other stuff. Yeah, that that can be considered probably on a separate track. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that probably that question is a big enough question that it probably should be separated and yeah. maybe even walled off <laughs> <laughs> from this one <laughs> because it's an ideal place right now with a later start time. Right. My daughter, I'm oh, loving it. It's great right. for her. That's She's actually going to be a shop good, next a good year. point to make. The sixth graders are actually starting to start. And then next well, year, they're all the elementary school. school. Yeah. Oh, right. So they're right. in a better spot. Yeah. One grade is benefiting, yeah. So as Karen's writing, um, I was thinking we could just kind of review some of the information we need. We've got all these ideas of, um, and the group that I was with, um, we actually took down the brainstorm of ideas of options. Allison typed it right into her. Uh, and you have it, David? So I yeah. Like. Yeah, I, I was thinking more we could go through the information that we need to gather. Okay. Because we're going to put all these options together in one document. So maybe, David, before the end of the night, I'll have you email that to me so I don't have to. Yeah, she said she copied Yeah, she, she, oh, she did. Okay, good. Um, so I'm just going to go through some of the questions that we brainstormed in our crew and then maybe kind of go over what the different types of information your group came up with that we might need to have. And remember that the place we're trying to get to is that next uh, on the Monday the 23rd we're coming back and looking at 
how do we build the survey? And, and we might even be able to draft some of this. Um, and I'll talk about how some of that came out in our group. So we wanted to do a, a, a set of questions around busing. We had like, you know, would you be, would you be, you know, what, and we started to think about ranking in busing, not so much yes, no, or from totally disagree to totally agree, you know, on a, a, a criterion scale, but more like, what's your highest priority in your busing? Is it not for middle school and high school students to mix with elementary, or is it to have a short ride? So you have some ranking of what the biggest issues are, not just these are the issues and I don't agree with any of them. So we, we, we got some ranking ideas. And we had a lot of our issues, our brainstorming things yeah. were all related to cost of transportation, flexible, you know, other things associated with mixing of students, hub and spoke. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So we were looking at that. Um, we talked about sports and more of it was information we wanted to gather from other schools. What's it do if there's a different, if there's a later start time, what's that do to sports? Um, I brought up some of the things I shared, I know I shared with the committee, which was um, Brattleboro and Bennington have moved their start times to 8.30 in the past three years, uh, but they're Division One schools and they're already like an hour and a half from the nearest Division One school, so they were already traveling a bunch they didn't see as a big deal, because they were already traveling so much every single so school. Mm. Um, we want to know more about the before and after care. Uh, one of the people at the table said, you know, in the morning there's a lot of kids at the elementary school for the before <coughs> care, right at 7.30. But there's not much at aftercare. So if we started earlier, what would that do? Well, yeah, we have. Uh, we also wondered about uh, with community connections, were there ways to enhance and really take care of maybe families who are less privileged too, who who need help, whether there's scholarships or there's more opportunities for care before or after school. Um, this is more of a question, not necessarily for the survey, but how can we be supportive through the change? Because it's going to be change, and there's going to be the natural resistance to change. Um, and then this is another ranking thing. Like, what are our top priorities for our children? Mm -hmm. You know, is this is this truly one of our top priorities? And that I thought that was uh, we you know, so that was another one of those ranking things. Um, this was a, a neat question. Assuming we have to have a school day of X length. What, what's your preferred start time? And having like half hour options. Um, we're going to enlist David as a computer programmer. Just walked out. Oh, no, is he right there? David's right there. We're going we're to enlist David because he's a computer programmer and help us make all this. Um, the option of start times, you know, like the different models that we've talked about flip flop, shift, totally shift it, same start time throughout the system. How would you rank those as a community member, what would be a priority for you? We were getting a lot into the ranking. Um, and then we said, would a blank number, we almost wanted to go into what was ranking, if we started start time at 9 o'clock at all schools or 10 o'clock at all schools, is that doable? Not, what do you like it? Can you make it work in your household? Um, and then then we want some stuff that wasn't in the survey, but percentage of students that drive to U32 or dropped off. I, I said to my table, and I might have said it with everyone here, we know our highest populated bus run is the U32 morning bus run that has the most students on it of any of our buses. And then we were talking about the survey, could there be some, uh, some short bulleted information on the TED Talk? And this came out in the last questions as well, being linked to the survey. So if people wanted to go look at the science before they took the survey, they could do that. I think that's so important because I think that will yeah. affect their willingness to go along with this. I mean, that's the, the why we talked about that. I was, if I could, yeah, I was, I was thinking as you're going through that, are you upfront going to say, here is this, you know, how are you going to frame it so people aren't just like, well, this is a pain in the neck, why are we doing this? Yeah. It's like, here is the here is the empirical evidence about how this affects kids. This is important, we think, to explore. Here now, here are the questions. Yeah. I agree. I think it needs to say um, before taking this, answering the survey questions. Please read this, and it could be a, a white paper. And if they want to read deeper, the yeah. links are embedded Thanks there. But you know, you kind of need to read that before you answer the questions, because most people will answer them differently right. depending on. When, if they think of something as important. And in the first meeting of the Start Time Committee, um, we did
did talk about 2008 and not <laughs> wanting to have a replay of something that sort of felt like it almost got a little somewhere and then just got quashed. And so what we're doing here, what we did a couple of weeks ago, this is all part and parcel of, of doing it differently so that as a community, we're, we've, we now have seen this TED Talk mm -hmm. and we've internalized it and we've reflected on it and it's, it's real to us now. And so now, you know, and we, we keep saying this, this is where this committee and the people that are in this room and have been sort of participating in this process have to become ambassadors for mm -hmm. this work mm -hmm. to say, you really should go check out this TED Talk. Like mm -hmm. there's, it's packed full of science and information. It's sourced. Like, mm -hmm. you know, is it a little something for some of us? Yes, but, mm -hmm. um, but the data behind it is legit. Um, and so this is where, as a community, we have to really, really encourage people to, to do this learning with us that we have done now, um, so, that we're, uh, so that we're not just going, hey, we've got this great idea, and we want to completely turn your days upside down. Right. Right. What else did you have, Karen, that I didn't uh, So that obviously a lot of overlap. I think the, one of the things that, part of the sort of ideas to consider, we did include things like having maybe a different even length of the day, say middle school goes an hour longer than high school or even two hours longer, and modeling it after potentially the, the actual work day that we think of like nine to five. We talked about potentially getting sixth graders into the middle school mix as part of these types of changes because they are part of the need to start later than elementary. We had a lot of things we wanted information on, and almost all of them were things like costs and modeling of how would this look if we if we did it this way. Um, we focused on you know don't rush it, and communication communication really came out so that we provide information from the other schools and kind of. We, we talked a little bit in our group about special needs kids and making sure that if they need occupational therapy or something like that, that they aren't penalized by either having to leave school or that there are, if there are laws or regulations that say they can't have it during the school day or something like that, that we find out what those are and are there any workarounds. So options and flexibility was important to us. So potentially if there's a family that can't make a school later a different school day work for them, the option of maybe they go to Montpelier, like they, maybe they find a school in our community that they trade for that we already do. So a lot about sports and extracurriculars. And we revisited sort of what about if some of those things were during the day instead of just always this after school. I, I think it's some of the, you mentioned in your for, information needed, it, are those groups that are impacted, which it sort of runs through all this, but maybe we just, who's impacted by this? Who's, who needs, you know, getting more data, more than just costs, but sort of, maybe you have it in there and I just yeah. don't see it, but just sort of, you know, outside, you know, are, are there uh, kids who are doing vocational school? How many are those who, you know, getting some numbers. Yeah. So uh, we, I think for me, I, I have a better understanding, a feel for like, all right, who, how is this impacting the broader student uh, group? So I have a question, would any, for survey though, would it be the same no matter who's filling it out or would it be different if it was for students versus? Well, I think, yeah, no, I think you tailor it to those audience groups. That's what I was thinking. But I, you know, one of the things I want us to think about on the 23rd, and I, really, I don't really want to make the decision until the 23rd, it's something we started in the show school start time. Do we feel that we're at, you know, we've talked about the different types of uh, engagement we want. And have we had enough engagement through these two forums to go to a survey? And because there's been some talk about we need to do this in other locations, town, or do we, we don't need to answer this tonight, or do we need other forums like this to keep building the knowledge base before we go to the survey? Mm -hmm. And I don't see the survey being the end and the answer, but it's, it's, it's thinking that out appropriately. Yeah. Kelly. I just wonder about um, school newsletters. I know we put out there that these forums are happening. Yeah. But I'm wondering about putting information out now. Like this is the stuff that we've been delving into. You should take a look at it. These are the ideas that are being thrown around almost like 
little carrots mm -hmm. of like, we're talking about possibly changing the school day to this, 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 or this. You should join us. <laughs> you know, the, those little nuggets might actually get people to... We can absolutely do that. Yeah, we can absolutely do that. Yeah. And yeah. link the TikTok in right. those newsletters. Every oh, yeah. time. Put that in there every single every time. time. Yeah, and on over the and over WCSU again. website, there is a school start times page that's got right. the links too. But yeah, I agree in with you. It needs out. to be in the newsletter. Yes. More oh no, I mean in the newsletter, it could say go here for more. But yeah, have you, that. You got to have an amount that they'll read. Yeah, two it pages needs to be like little blitz of like, hey, these are the ideas so far. If you want to add your two cents, you should come come to the table. <laughs> exactly. I think there's I think there's a level of that in a survey as well, as yeah. you right. mentioned earlier. When, for some people, it's it's not real when it's in a committee, mm -hmm. right? It's, there's, when, when we're asking for people to take action, mm -hmm. when we're asking for tangible feedback and input, mm -hmm. then it, it sort of turns that corner of, oh, this might actually become something mm -hmm. that's not just this sort of brainstorm out there, but might actually affect me. And so then you might get a little different level of engagement from the different people that we're trying to bring into this process just by virtue of, of putting a survey out. Mm -hmm. uh, because right now it's too public, right? There's, right. there's no it's actual public. proposal yeah, yeah, yeah. for okay, yeah. people to respond to. Yeah, you're you're and, right, David. When the proposals come down. Right. That's when people are going to be start popping. So. Right. Yeah. But we want to get the positive information out, you know, information out there so we can start to have a I, I think um, Front Porch Forum is one of the best ways to yeah. get information out to the, out to the community. And so uh, um, I'd just like to make a suggestion that there's five towns, so five, one person from each town become the communicator on Front Porch Forum and not, so it's not coming from Bill and probably not even from school board members, but from community members, and I'll, I'll do East Montpelier if, uh, and, 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 and so I could host, say, hey, there's this cool thing going on with school start times, here's a TED Talk video that I just watched that I think is pretty important, and if five people yeah. do that, you know, um, I think that kind of communication would be far more effective than top down from, yes, from the mm. school district. Yeah, and you get some feedback right away too, <laughs> you know, whether you like it or not. You can forward the feedback to the school. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> um, fake email address. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of hesitant to think that a survey should go out before more of that information has been obtained because when the survey goes out mm -hmm. and more people know what's being discussed and they have questions, the questions may not be able to be answered and to just have some more knowledge. And so maybe it is doing some more forums at the same time gathering some of that information because it, it may make a difference in how questions are phrased and at least to be able to get back to people when they're asking their questions. So how, how many more forums do you, and, and I, I, I actually agree with what you're saying, just, mm -hmm. just to be clear. I, I just, you know, in terms of, it's, it's easy to get into that pattern of, mm, maybe we just need one more forum. <laughs> well, we identified some information um, at least. Well, we did, that's yeah, true. And, yeah. and, and not that more thoughts wouldn't come from another forum, but at least, you know, there's some basic information, cost, impact, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, the system information is frankly my responsibility to, to, to come back. I mean, I'm going to be tapping people within the system. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I just, we just hadn't frankly gotten to it. Yeah. No, we're, and I think we probably want, I think in our process that we laid out, we have another forum after the surveys go out, correct? I think so. I have to go back and look at the timeline. I mean, I, I think what, what you've just uncovered is that we shot it, <laughs> right? right? Because for all of the conversation that we've just had around the forum, uh, sorry, uh, about the survey, the survey is going to bring people out who will have questions. And so we want to make sure that yeah. in the process that there's a place for those questions mm -hmm. to come and be answered. 
Well, I, I kind of um, like the thought as far as if, if a little bit more information is going to go out to give people the opportunity to come in mm -hmm. and be part of the discussion beforehand. Yeah. I mean, maybe nobody else will come, but just to do that because if some more time is needed anyway to get some of this information, why not have another this opportunity? really follows yeah. a thorough process of asking for, for information mm -hmm. and feedback. I like the rankings, just to offer a reflection on I, it's I a like, great idea. I forgot I who said it at our table, but I mm -hmm. liked it too. It's just that yeah. let's get some rankings. It's too easy to say no, I don't like anything. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You have to actually put these into orders of how much you have to hold your nose for each of them. Well, well right. <laughs> and one of the things I was indicating there was that uh, two different aspects. One is you might find that everybody really just prefers things to stay the way they are. Now, there was still then we have to come back and say but the research says and you can continue to examine that but at least you understand how much inertia you have in the community to keep things the way they are and then the other possibility whether you do a ranking system or a rating system subtly different but is to hopefully through maybe people's second and third choices be able to percolate something towards the top as being more broadly appealing even if any one given time is you know not enough of a majority by itself so Final thoughts. I see, I see Scott thinking. No, I, 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 I've got your thinking yeah, face. You know my thinking face? Yeah, yeah, I've seen it rarely enough. So <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, when do we get together again? So April 23rd. It's really it's the Monday we come back from break. It's really short. Yeah, for me, it's really short because it's yeah. it's like mm -hmm. four school days. Right. Um, but that was how we designed it because we were trying to get to the place of can we get to May 10th or May 15th with a survey? to do it the second half of May. Uh, but I think, you know, one of the things we talked about as a committee was, I remember being in this room two months ago as we set that timeline was, wait a minute, this is a flex, it's a timeline, but it, we need right. to realize it may need to be flexible yeah. just to where Corinne was. Yeah. Or, and other people said it too, we need to do a little bit more education before we're ready for the survey. Mm -hmm. So, I don't see it like we, I think from my, my personal view is it's better for us to have the information out correctly than to rush a survey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that going to be in the 23rd, 1800 to 2000? Yeah. Um, I have 5:30 written down. Is it? Oh, maybe it is 5:30 that day because we were thinking more committee work, but yeah, right. we could probably. I think we could flex it a little too. Okay. Later start, start time. Yeah. Later start time. <laughs> <laughs> later start time. <laughs> Thanks. So we're we have to <laughs> Yeah, we just agree. <laughs> and then how how is it being decided as far as getting out information in each town? I like the idea of not having it come top down, but from community members, who is going to make sure that happens? So we have a really good list right now. It's the reason we've been doing the index cards. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, if people wanted to volunteer as Larry did tonight, that's fine. But we could also ask because of you know, the representation. We now have about 25, 30 names. Of people that have been in at least one of these forums to say, would you be willing to post something on mm -hmm. front porch forum? If we just like we do, I think the board communication, like we do at the end of every board, mm -hmm. someone's writing it, who's posting it mm -hmm. in each town? Right. Yeah, and then if you want to personalize it, you personalize it so it has your voice and you know identification. Because sometimes it's better to come out that way. Right. But here are the bullet points. But I think we can figure that out. I don't feel any pressure to have to figure that out tonight, but I could be persuaded the other way too. So, and we can do that on the 23rd. And we're trying to hit. We're trying to hit the end of May. Right. We had set a timeline. Correct me if I'm wrong, Karen, but we were trying to get to the somewhere within the week of Memorial Day. Right. To say we're processing results because if we use a cert, any of the electronic tools we have, we're going to have the results. We were just now open for like two weeks and just pump it out there every day. Well, I guess it makes a difference what information is being put out. I mean, if it's just like a general, if you haven't seen the information, the links on the start time page, you know, here it is, or is it adding another form or, or, or what's the point? So, uh, you know, vacation may or may not be a good time for people to have an hour. It takes an hour at least to, you know, get at that page and look at a TED talk and maybe read a couple of things. Mm -hmm. And I, <laughs> I don't think they I, can find too many people spending an hour. Well, <laughs> I'm surprised. You, no, no, but, but I, I mean, just to, 
I think what Larry suggested and what what Bill is talking about, I think really the, the piece that we all keep bringing up is the TED Talk. Mm -hmm. So if there's one thing that we really would like the broader community to do, it's to go watch the TED Talk. Mm -hmm. It's what, like 10 minutes? It was 12, 12, minutes. Minutes. 12, 12 minutes. I deliberately picked, yeah. I mean, yeah. there are three of them on TED yeah. to talk about school to start time. And I thought that was the clearest one and the one, you know, if I'm gonna have everyone in a room watching it, I'm not gonna go more that we right. tell the teachers this, you know, yeah. don't turn on the movie video. Right. Ten minutes. Right. And so then you can say, as Larry perfectly put, you know, I've, I've sat into a couple of these meetings, there's interesting work going on. Here's the sort of starting jumping off point was this TED talk that we Twelve all, minutes of your time. Twelve minutes of your time. And if after you see the TED Talk, knowing that this conversation is happening, you'd like to get some more information, boom, here's the hyperlink. Go to the school website. And come to the next meeting. And like come, to the, come to the next forum. Yeah. yeah. Because there's going to be another forum. And then there's going to be, a, you know, I mean, you can expand from there to the point that everybody's eyes roll back in their head. But the TED Talk is what we're really, it's what we would like people to see and internalize. Mm -hmm. have to figure out hyperlinks in newspapers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a more organic way for it to happen. So I, I will commit tonight to, uh, not tonight, but somewhere between Friday, by Friday, of getting out to everyone that's on, that's submitted their email here, uh, something basically what Ruben just said. And then you can take it and massage it, and if you want to put it up, that I think I, I agree with Larry. If it well, it should only be one person in each town, right? That's right, right, yeah. so. right. Yes, that's fine. Yes. And we could. It, I don't know how many. I know we have Callis, and we have right. Middlesex, and we have East Montpelier here. We, and we don't want to be accused Last of being time Sinclair. there was another Berlin person here. Yeah. 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 So, so it's really Worcester. it's Worcester, Worcester, and I'm sure Matt Matt would do it. Mm -hmm. I know Matt yeah. would do it. Definitely. So is there someone from each of those towns that would like to do that? I heard Larry saying volunteer himself for East Montpelier, so you yeah, did. Yeah, I was already thinking I'd do it. Okay. So I have a question as to why only one? I mean, that would be the hard part, point of it Maybe is it to, starts to generate just, dialogue. Exactly. Yeah, I'll chime right in. Yeah, it starts a dialogue. Yeah. 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 And then we'll have to So I'm, a, I'm happy to do it. I'm just a little concerned that my position is different. That I'm not just a parent, and right. so I don't want to open that up in Calus as a teacher. Yeah, as you well. might be seen as part of the top so, down. I, yeah, I don't want to be seen as trying to tell people something that I, is one way or the other. I, I push back on that. I think the more teacher support we can get yeah. for this whole thing, the better. And, and uh, I mean, if there's no, if if there's if you're the only person in Calus who wants who's willing to do it, I say absolutely. But if, you know, I don't, the only I don't person see. Who now is here. I, 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 well, I, I just, I just right now. I, I, think, yeah, okay. I think the superintendent. I love how they're already volunteering people we not have, present. <laughs> <laughs> to not voice opinions, right? When it comes to school right, in open we forums, right. we have to be careful about that mm -hmm. because we can be influential mm -hmm. in ways with parents, right? That. Right. Maybe other people can't. Yeah, that's, so, that's a that's a fair. But the uh, chime in, <coughs> you just said yeah, I think your husband to think totally that would be perfect. Someone and then if someone else posts, you chime in and say, as a teacher, yeah, I, I see positive to this because of whatever. Um, yeah, that would yeah. be easier. Or get my husband. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> And then I will work. Um, I will work on a newsletter article um, that we could be. You know, there's the vacation we could be sent to all the schools to to publish in their newsletters. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Crane, would you be willing to do something for Berlin? Okay. Thank you. I do think it's a valid point, though, that vacation is. Uh, yeah. Many people are going away. Yeah. No one's going to look at their front porch for them. Yeah. Unless it's well, done like immediately, right? I, I just worry I've been that having it both before then and after. I mean, yeah. sometimes people just miss front porch forms because they come out practically every day. Yeah. So having it yeah. mentioned more than once. I ignore mine for months at a time. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be good probably to have one.
before Multiple the 23rd times. again, saying, hey, yeah, by yeah. the way, remember there's a meeting in a couple days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kelly, you and I can keep talking through the next morning, through tomorrow morning, we'll figure out how to get some of the cows. <laughs> I'll do it. They volunteered two husbands over here. <laughs> <laughs> Can someone write it? I mean, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm basically writing it for you. And if okay, you want to yeah, use it the way it is, it you take it. If you say, I wouldn't speak like the way Bill writes. <laughs> 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 you know how Bill writes. Little, you tweak it to what you want it to be. Yeah. Yeah. For what it's worth, I was already thinking I was going to write mine tomorrow and I'll just send it yeah. to, to the you already sent out, right? The notes from last meeting. So I'll just reply to that message, which yeah. already had everybody's addresses yeah. on it. Yeah, and I, the reason I'm, I'm pretty sure we got asked and this is the way she takes notes of what was just said, <laughs> that most of it just got captured yeah. <laughs> from way Ruben was. Yeah. So do you have the link to the Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Good. Thank you. Thank everyone. you so much. Thank you. Yeah, this has been a great discussion. <laughs> <laughs>